Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to calculate daily averages in your pivot tables. So in this example here, we're calculating the average of the total daily sales uh, for each month in the year. And so I should point out that for this video, we're going to need Excel 2013 or later for Windows, and that can include Office 365 because we are using the data model and DAX measures. I'll post a link to another video that explains how to do this in Excel 2010 and earlier. So this calculation for average of total daily sales is done within the pivot table here using a DAX measure. And it's really taking the total sales number for the time period, in this case it's months, dividing that by the distinct number of days within that month or that time period, the number of days that we have data for. And then uh, that would be the average. That would give us the average daily sales as total sales divided by the number of days gives us this average daily sales number. And so if we take a look at the source data here, it's good to understand the source data. Very simple data set. Uh, each row within the source data is for one sales transaction. And as you can see, we have multiple sales transactions per day. So we have uh, six transactions on January 2nd here, uh, five on January 3rd, and so on. And so what our calculation is actually doing is if we look at this other pivot table here, here we're summing up the total sales by day. The pivot table is actually just taking these numbers, total sales by day, so this is a sum of sales for all those transactions in the same day. It's just taking this, these numbers here and finding the average of all of those transactions for each day for the entire month. And this can also work for other time periods as well. So in this example here, we have the average of total daily sales uh, for the year. We can also compare across quarters here. So here's the daily average for the quarter and the different quarters and then the months within the year. And we can do this for any filter context, really. We can also break it out. So here I have an example uh, that's comparing the two regions. So this is daily average sales for each region across months. And I even created a little pivot chart over here that just visualizes that comparison in a chart. And this also shows one of the main reasons why we might want to calculate the daily average, which is to show this trend over a specific time period. We can also compare it between categories like regions or departments or anything like that. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to create this calculation. All right, so let's just start fresh with our data set here. I'll put a link in the description below this video where you can download this file and follow along. So the first thing we're going to do is insert a pivot table. So just select any cell inside of our data range here, go to the insert tab on the ribbon and choose pivot table. That will bring up the create pivot table window. And really the important selection here is that we're going to check this box that says add this data to the data model. Again, you'll need to be using Excel 2013 or later for Windows, including Office 365. And that should uh, have this checkbox here that you can check. And this will allow us to create DAX measures using Power Pivot. So go ahead and click OK. And don't let any of that scare you. Uh, I'll explain how that works. So we now have a new sheet here with our pivot table. And the first thing we're going to do is create a few of those measures to do these calculations. So the first one is pretty simple. We're just going to sum up the amount. Now we could just drag the amount into the values area to give us a sum of amount, but we're instead going to create an explicit explicit measure here. So right click the table name here. Here's the table name that contains our source data. Just right click that table name and choose add measure. That will bring up this measure window here where we're going to create our DAX measure. The first requirement is that we give this measure a name. So in this case, we will call this uh, total sales, just like that. Uh, and then we'll also uh, write a formula. In this case, the formula is going to be very simple, It'll just be a sum formula using the sum function. So you can type the sum function, open the parentheses, and then we'll reference one of our data columns here, or fields. In this case, we're going to reference the amount field because we want to sum the amount. So I'll double click amount. That will add the reference there. And then we can close the parentheses here and then we'll click OK. So that's created a new measure here, a new field in our fields list. We can see it right here, total sales. And we can now drag that into the values area of our pivot table. And that, of course, will just total up the entire sales for the data set. 
So we're now going to create another measure to uh, calculate the distinct count of the number of days. So to do that, again, we're going to right click our table name here, click add measure. Well, we'll also give this measure a name, we can call it distinct day count, something like that. And then for this, we're going to use a different DAX function, which is uh, distinct count. So start typing the word distinct, you'll see the distinct count function right here, we can click that. And then we, for this, we're going to reference a column. It just has one argument for a column name. And we're going to reference the date column because we want to get a distinct count of those dates in our date column. So we'll just double click date and then close the parentheses again to finish the formula. And then we'll click OK. And again, that will add a new field to our field list here for our distinct day count. Now we can also add this to the values area for now, just so we can see the calculation here. And we have 259 distinct days in our data set. So even though within our data, we have multiple dates for, or multiple rows for each date, as we can see here, that distinct count is just going to return the number of uniques, the unique values for the date column. And that number for the entire data set is 259. And then finally, we wanna create a measure for our daily average, which will just be total sales divided by our distinct day count. So again, we're going to create a measure for this. We'll just right click here, add measure and for this measure name we'll just uh, for now we'll just call it daily average keep it simple and again this is just going to be total sales so if we uh, press the open bracket key on the keyboard that will give us a list of all of our fields and also our measures here so we're going to double click total sales and then we're going to divide by again open brackets and divide by and double clicked distinct day count so divide by that measure there and that's our formula, it's pretty simple. And we'll go ahead and click OK. And now that will also be added to the bottom of our fields list here. Here we have daily average. We can also drag this into the values area. We can also just click this checkbox as well. That'll put that in the values area at the bottom. And we can see here we have our daily average number, which again is going to be total sales divided by the distinct day count. Now the power of this DAX measure is that we can display this across any filter context, any date grouping we want, like years, quarters, months, or even different regions as we showed at the beginning of the video. So to do that, we'll just take our date field and we'll drag it into the rows area. And that will give us a list of all of our dates here. So we wanna group this field. So we can just select any cell inside the rows area there that contains a date. We'll go to the Analyze tab on the ribbon and choose group field and this is where we can group it by months quarters and years so just select those and click ok and that will add some fields to our fields list for months quarters and uh, years right here also automatically adds those to the rows area of the pivot table and we can now see those over here so here's our quarter roll up here total sales for the quarter distinct day count for the quarter and then our daily average we might also want to change the number formatting here uh, to maybe more of a currency format and add a few decimal places just so you can see that average for every single time period and it's also important to note that we do not need the total sales and distinct day count fields in our pivot table. We can remove those fields from the values area. I'll just drag those both out of the values area and our daily average will still calculate just fine. It'll still display here in our pivot table and do those calculations for every single filter context. So you might want to display total sales in the day count or you might not. You have options there on how you do that. If you're going to break this out by a different category, like we had uh, the region field here, here's our region field, we can put that in the columns area. Now we can see the daily average sales for each region for each time period, and also the grand total here as well. So there's a lot of flexibility and a lot of possibilities on how you compare your different daily averages and find trends within your data using this technique. And if your company's on a fiscal calendar, this will also work as well. I'll put a link in the description below this video to an article about fiscal calendars and using a calendar table with your pivot tables and power pivot. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. 
If you are watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.